Good day, this is Dr. Conrad Miller. I'm going to try to tell you the story of the Chernobyl nuclear accident that occurred on April 26th, 1986, maybe five minutes. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, it's the morning of April 26th in the Ukraine, in the northern Ukraine. It's dark out, and at the fourth nuclear reactor at the Chernobyl Atomic Energy Station, they're running a test. They drop the power output to maybe 6 7%. And then suddenly, it surged to 100 times, 100% of the power. And that happened in less than one minute. A catastrophic steam explosion occurred that flipped the reactor's massive cap like a coin and left it wedged and hanging askew inside the ruined reactor. The reactor's core caught fire leading to the largest single non-military radiation release in the history of the world. In another description, they say that the nuclear fuel elements ruptured and the resulting explosive force of steam lifted off the cover plate of the reactor, releasing radioactivity into the atmosphere. A second explosion occurred that threw out fragments of burning fuel and graphite from the reactor core and allowed air to rush in, causing the graphite moderator to burst into flames and then they had a fire that lasted for 10 days and then radioactivity continued to be released and is still being released today. Now they didn't tell the people there what was going on. In fact, they started making videos and saying that the West was trying to uh, tell stories about the Russians and no, no, that couldn't be. Actually, it was the Soviet Union back then. Uh, and uh, it wasn't really discovered until a Swedish nuclear station 1,200 kilometers away reported that they uh, were getting higher doses of radiation around the plant. And even today, the Ukrainian authorities, where this occurred, north of Kiev, are pleading for hundreds of millions of dollars for the next stage of the containment of Chernobyl, because they did have a containment, and then they put a sarcophagus of concrete over it, which is still leaking today. And now that it's cracked and they have to build another one, so that's uh, what's going on today. And what happened was, you know, in Fukushima, they're trying to keep things under control, but they really can't yet. It's going to take them nine months to get a cold shutdown where they get below the boiling point of water, which is 212 degrees. And so they're still leaking over there, but they have three reactors that are in not very good shape. And number two is leaking, and then the fuel pools are all and various states of losing radiation and leaking into the atmosphere and the water. And what they did at the Soviet Union then was they summoned military people to come do this, to get things under control. And actually they had about somewhere between 700,000 and 830,000 people that came to liquidate, quote unquote, liquidate the problem. And many of these people were lost to follow up and died prematurely. Actually, there was some a study done. Uh, well, studies, many studies were done, and this is the book that you should get. Now it's ten dollars about Chernobyl consequences. I used to use my fingers here backwards, and this was done by uh, reviewing five thousand studies in non-English languages by the Rus Russian, Ukrainian, weird doctors and epidemiologists study various populations of people and fauna and found, for example, that thyroid disease in Belarus, where most, most of the uh, radiation fell, where the, the kids who were born, were, who were less than 18 when this occurred, had a 200 time increase, 200 time increase in thyroid cancer and uh, even had some births, congenital births, of babies that had thyroid cancer congenitally, which is amazing. So there are many, many, many diseases that you'll read about in this book where basically Dr. Yablokov and his associates in reviewing these articles found that about almost a million people so far have died prematurely from various radiation uh, induced in contamination diseases. Now they say that 50% uh, of 
uh, the surface of 13 European countries uh, was contaminated. And that was from the fallout from Chernobyl. Dr. Vladimir Chunisenko, the nuclear physicist and former head of the Ukrainian Academy of Science, said that about 7 billion out of 9 billion curies of the fuel in the core was, was launched into the atmosphere and spewed all around. And he estimates that an area of about 375 mile radius, really, should be evacuated, but it couldn't be done because of political reasons. They don't want to say, just like what's going on in Japan. And uh, for about 100,000 years. Why 100,000 years? Well, the, the radionuclides that are produced by fission in uranium have very long half-lives, where half the radioactivity disappears, but it, in the meanwhile, almost all of them can cause some type of cancer, especially radioactive iodine, cesium, which has a half-life of 30 years, and a, and a hazardous life, which is 10 to 20 times the half-life of, in other words, 300 to 600 years, cesium strontium, which the body looks at like it's a calcium, takes it to bone, incorporates it to bone, makes the bone marrow, and you get leukemia from getting strontium into your body. And of course, plutonium with a half-life of 24,000 years, that can be inhaled into the lung and cause lung cancer over and over and over again in different situations. And that will take about 20 years to develop, 30 years to develop most of the time. These are the kind of little particles that are contaminated and have gone all around the world from Chernobyl and are happening daily at Fukushima now uh, that people who live far away from Chernobyl or Fukushima will be getting, unfortunately, without a label on them, and you'll never know. Now, the other thing that they did was just another interesting thing. You know that the Second World War ended with the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And for the first four years after the bombs were dropped, research was forbidden. And during that time, more than 100,000 of the weakest people died, according to Dr. Yamakov. And a similar pattern emerged at Chernobyl. The USSR authorities officially forbade doctors from connecting diseases with radiation. And, like the Japanese experience, all data was classified for the first three years after 1986. And you know, the doc some of the doctors were put into mental institutions because they tried to report what they were finding and all these crazy diseases that they never saw before. And um, there's a funny little thing in here about what happened in France. Of course, the French pretended that nothing happened at all. Meanwhile, the Boers in Germany today still too, radio too radioactive to eat because probably they eat the mushrooms at certain seasons. So 20 to 80 percent at various times of the year when they're hunting the boards in Germany are still today too radioactive to eat. And in France, they noticed that the um, they hit a hog there too, in the, around the mountains of Vosges. And it was glowing. They noticed it was glowing and then they checked the mountains around there and the levels were 12,000 to 24,000 becquerels per square meter. Uh, and the norm is about 600 becquerels per square meter. So these poor animals, uh, they probably ate uh, the mushrooms there too. So the hogs, they like mushrooms. Mushrooms really suck up the radioactivity. And that's what can happen. So the, the lesson to be learned, of course, is that nuclear power is very dangerous. And what Dr. Chernyshenko said is that, I'm going to read you a little quote and then we're going to finish this for you. To construct a safe nuclear reactor is practically impossible either here or in Russia. We simply cannot get energy from such enterprises because we are dealing with nuclear processes with uncontrolled reactions which occur within millionths of a second. And no matter what kind of protection mechanism you design, Sooner or later, the object must explode, and they will. Of course, they were created initially, the nuclear reactors we have, created to make plutonium for the first atomic bombs. Then somebody decided, oh, this is a good way to boil water. So, it'll be too cheap to meter, 
let's boil the water, we'll put the uranium in there, we won't think about the biology or the leaking or the possible explosions, we'll just boil the water, it'll make some steam, it'll turn the turbine, and it'll create a lot of electricity. And that was true, but they forgot about the biology and the reality and the leaks and the venting. And even today, when nuclear plants leak their gases, these gases that are supposed to be inert, like xenon and krypton, they do break down to so-called daughter products, like strontium around nuclear plants. You have increased incidences now of cancers, especially in children. So uh, Chernobyl is still leaking. Fukushima is still leaking. And uh, in Belarus, uh, one last thing, they noted that in 1993, they had 200,000 abortions because people were afraid to have babies, especially with the people that worked or lived in Belarus, or the ones that liquidated, took the, well, this was the last thing, the liquidators. They had to come in, and they, one of the things they had to do was that, go to the plant, put on this garb, but wasn't shielding their general area. And they had to take a wheelbarrow, and they had to shovel up some debris, which is very radioactive, run with the wheelbarrow, weighed about 80 pounds, dump whatever they put in the wheelbarrow off the side, and of the roof where this debris was, and then run them back down. So they had about four minutes exposure. And most of those million people that are dying prematurely are these liquidators who uh, their average age uh, life expectancy was about 45 to 50. And normal life expectancy for Americans is around 75. And today in Russia, they say that the average life expectancy has dropped since 1986. Women. 64 now, when it should be about 77, and men are down to 59. This is Dr. Conrad Miller. The story of Chernobyl goes on. The story of Fukushima goes on. And now 2011, 25 years after the incident in the Ukraine, April 26th, 1986.